Hey guys, Timmy D here, and I'm going to do a hopefully very short but very detailed video on a complete guide to batch making kombucha. Um, there's a lot of channels out there that have some good information. The number one channel that was helpful to me was the girl on You Brew Kombucha. So I will have a link to her channel because after I made some initial mistakes, it was by far the best channel and helping to get me going. But I still feel like there's a need to have one video that's going to walk you through the very beginning to the very end on making kombucha. So here's the deal. When I first decided I wanted to start making kombucha, I found out about it by reading a book called The Obesity Code. So I was drinking many sodas, the amount doesn't matter, but it was a lot, and have for years uh, drank a lot of Diet Coke, or excuse me, Coke Zero. Um, so after reading The Obesity Code, that book kind of more or less changed my life in the way that I eat and the stuff I was drinking. So once uh, I started drinking water and unsweet tea, man, I really quickly found out that I wanted something else to supplement that. And, and the book did mention kombucha, so I started finding out what the heck is kombucha. And uh, it is it is good. So. The, but the first thing I did is I went to Amazon and I paid $75 for a kombucha kit. Look, that kit, uh, you're getting very little for it. What you're paying mostly out of the $75, I would say, I don't know, 40 to 50 of it was for instructions, right? You got $20 worth of product. But where is that kit good? It is good for people that are trying to just learn about kombucha. Um, maybe you can get it as a gift for somebody that said, you know, I'd kind of like to find out about that. Um, but you find out after you get it, one, you have no more product. You got one bottle, a set of instructions. And if you're going to start drinking kombucha on a regular basis, you can't just make one gallon. I mean, that's, that is not going to last you. If you're somebody like me that is doing a lifestyle change in the stuff that you drink and the food you eat, then you got to make a lot of it. And you got to keep it's a it's an ongoing process um, to to keep stock. So I drink, and this is not here to talk about how much you should or should not drink. But I drink three kombuchas a day. I have and I do 12 ounce bottles. I'm gonna have links to all the stuff where I got them. Um, but I do these 12 ounce. Um, ah, I forgot what these things are called. I got a special name. Anyway, those bottles. And so I do one in the morning, usually one at lunch and one in the evening. And man, do I look forward to having those. So again, I messed up, not messed up, I just, I bought the kit and, uh, and quickly found out that that's really not the way to go. So, uh, you know, I went on eBay and bought these gallon jars. I bought the little temperature sensors, although honestly, totally not necessary. Um, and what else? So I got my these jars. Um, I'm going to go through all this stuff, but for um, this little, this is for doing my bottling. Walmart, this jar right here, five bucks, and then I can actually bottle. Um, so we're going to walk through the entire process. I'm going to show you from beginning to end what I do um, for the tea. I did the bulk tea now. Bought this on Amazon. This is a three pound, I mean, is that, no, one pound. One pound and one pound, right there. Um, now, you know, in some cases, and, and I do it, you get ready to get into something and, and you think, oh, what all do I need? And you start buying stuff before you even get into it good, and then later realize there's things you didn't need. So I'm gonna tell you, um, you know, here's a, a pH tester, folks. You don't need a pH tester. You don't. It is, um, if you want to feel good and you want to spend, you know, 15 bucks on a pH tester, do it. But you know what? After you start making it, you'll never use this again. So don't need that. Um, I also have, this is a refractometer. So that is for testing sugar. Now, this is something that I have used, and then this is a different, this is a high, I think this is called a hydrometer. Hydro, hydro, uh, um, I'll put the link and spell it correctly, but this is also for testing sugar levels because that was something that was 
important to me. And so um, that right there, this I think if you really start getting into doing this stuff, this will be something that you will use because you know if you're really if you're watching your sugar intake, you'll want to know you know how much sugar do I have in my finished kombucha product. So that not necessary, but I do use it. Um, this right here, little meter. We actually have very good water here now. When I first started, I was not doing distilled water. Um, I have found that after, and I've now bought a distiller, a home distiller, and I'll show you what I use. I'm very, very happy with it. So I'm distilling all of my water for making the kombucha and even for, um, I don't think you see, I got a big jug here. So just for drinking water, that's what we fill with distilled water now. But again, um, I'm in North Mississippi, just south of Memphis. Our, I think, is my understanding, Memphis, the, this area, has some of the best um, tap water uh, in the country. So, but this is a, a tester for testing your, you know, what, just uh, solids in the water in a parts per million. I think our tap water was like 50. Um, but anyway, I still have found that my kombuchas, uh, the SCOBY, actually looks much healthier and is much better since I started doing it with distilled water. So with that said, this is something that could be useful, but again, it's kind of a maybe a one-time use once you find out what your water is, so really not necessary. Um, and that's, that's it. So I'm going to kind of pause and show you some of the equipment that I use, and we'll go from there. So I did quickly find out that having a tea maker, a tea brewer, man, that is, uh, that's, in my opinion, it's necessary. But you do not have to spend a lot of money. So I'll put the link to this. I want to say this one was right around $50. I might be off on that. But it's got a, a strainer where you put your tea leaves inside. It's got a timer so it automatically heats up to 212 degrees. I'll show this in a little bit because I got to get going on a brew for today. And, and then once it boils, once it hits 212 degrees, it turns off. So it heats up, boils, turns off. I usually let it sit for about seven to eight minutes and then uh, pour it into the glass jar and add my sugar. So this right here, once you know that you're gonna start doing kombucha on a regular basis, absolutely necessity. I'm sure some people mix up their, their teas and use different kind, but I just have this, the Ceylon OP Black, and then this, I don't know how you pronounce that, Quailon China Oolong, which is uh, the green. And man, these two together are um, very good. I'm very happy with them. Now, this, is, this came with that $75 overpriced kit that I bought on Amazon. But I will say I really like this. So it's a stainless steel um, funnel, but it's got this little piece that pulls out, and it, this is strains. So when I actually uh, pour out all of my kombucha into the jar for bottling, that'll strain out all the kind of little gooey strings from your uh, from your scoby. So I like that for covering your gallon jars so you can see here here's all my, my gallon jars and I have the little uh, strips on there but again I mean they are useful I, I shouldn't say I, I would recommend putting those on there so you don't add your um, kombucha when the water's too hot but we'll talk about that more um, for covering those you know people talking about using cheesecloth don't do that the cheesecloth will tear apart it'll get stuck to the side of the um, the jar, little fragments of it can then fall in to the inside. The only way to go, in my opinion, is to buy these large coffee filters. You got a whole box of them, last you forever, and then you take them off, put them on here, and of course you'll need some rubber bands to put on there. That keeps the insects out, lets it breathe, and that's all you need. So, absolutely need to get you some of these. So for doing the tea, I take this out. It's got a uh, 
you can see that there's a max line. I actually fill it to the 1.5 liter line. So I initially bought some distilled water bottle, the jug, so I would have the, the extra was just to refill with my own distilled water. And then also saved and cleaned out some milk jugs. So the first thing you can do, fill this up to the right level. All right, so there we are. Now, on your tea, I just leave a measuring. So, and you're going to use, this is a, uh, a tablespoon. You're going to put in three tablespoons of tea leaves. So, I will come in. I do one tablespoon of one tea. I come in. Look, it's, it's close. I'm doing, that is roughly a half a tablespoon. So, there's that one. And then you come in and do one and a half tablespoons of this, of the other tea. So again, there's one. And I just kind of eyeball it. Probably a little more than half. There. There's half. Put that in there. We're done with that. Now I'm just going to screw this on top. Set it in there. And we'll hit the power button. And one more time. Now, it's... The water, I mean, it's 69 degrees in there right now. It went to 212. What this is going to do, it's going to heat up and boil, and it's actually going to do this fairly quickly. I would say it's going to bring it to a boil within three minutes, and it's going to cut off. After it cuts off, we're going to pour it into the jar and add one cup, exactly one cup of sugar, not any more. So we'll let that boil, and we'll be right back. Okay, so, you know, I've already got six gallons. Uh, I'm going to make these six gallons up today. So what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and just fill up each of these. And again, we're doing one cup of sugar. Do not, uh, originally, you know, I thought, ooh, more is better. It'll just be better. No. It's one cup of sugar. That's all you need. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in each of these jars. And then when the tea is ready, we'll let it uh, steep for in the hot water for about seven, eight minutes. Then I will take that and pour it in to each jar, stir it up so the sugar will dissolve. And then once the uh, we'll add cold water, and when the temperature gets down below about uh, 86 degrees, then we can add our kombucha starter and our SCOBY. All right, while the tea is making, I just wanted to come in and show you this is the distiller I use. It's uh, whatever the name is, I don't know how to pronounce that, but. Uh, I'm pretty sure I bought this on Amazon, but it probably takes three to almost four hours um, to make up a gallon. And I put hot water in it to start with, kind of speeds the process up, but I've been making quite a bit of distilled water, and so far I'm very, very happy with this. All right, this has probably been running for, I don't know, three to four minutes, maybe a few minutes longer. But right now we're at 208, you see it's starting to boil. And I just wanted to show you when it hits 212, it's going to cut off. So there it is, it just hit 212. And you know, within a couple seconds, boom, there it is. It shut down. So now it's going to stop boiling. And I'm going to let it sit here for about seven or eight minutes. I mean, it's not a, I mean, there's been times when I went off and left and it was there a lot longer, but I will let it steep in that hot water uh, for at least eight minutes. Okay, so it's been uh, right at 10 minutes. And what I'm gonna do, first thing I do, I mean, we're at 192 degrees, but I'm gonna take the little tea strainer out. Now look, that water, this is, it's hot. It is still hot. So what I do is I'll take this out and I'm gonna run this cold tap water over it and through it and that'll cool that down so you don't burn yourself when you go dump these leaves in the trash can. So it doesn't take much and it'll actually cool it down. And this, of course, this just screws right off. And now I'm just left with the tea and I'm going to go dump this and I'll be right back. 
And you know, when you dump it, you're gonna have just a few leaves left in there. Uh, when you're batch making, do not worry about cleaning that out because we're gonna put new new leaves right in there and they'll be wet and fluffy just like these. So I don't worry about cleaning it out until the last batch. So I'm just gonna pour this good hot tea in with my cup of sugar, stir it up, and let that sugar dissolve good. And we'll add more water, but I'm going to let this sit for a little bit until that sugar is completely dissolved. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, you will not add your kombucha starter and your SCOBY to this until the temperature is like 86 degrees or below. Uh, if you do, you can, you can damage that. So do not. You don't want to kill the bacteria. So let that temperature come down. Now, if you are making a batch and you're not in a hurry, you can just make it, we'll add a little bit of water to it, but just let the temperature cool and come back later in the day. If you are in a time crunch, you're trying to get it done, you want to get your starter in, your SCOBY, and just get it on the shelf and be done with it, you can put your distilled water in the refrigerator so that when you pour in cool water, uh, you'll help bring this temperature down. Um, so, that you know, if you're just somebody on a time crunch you can certainly do that but otherwise we'll just let it cool and I'll come back later today and finish it up when the temperature gets to where it needs to be alright so uh, after I made my tea today uh, I actually had other stuff I had to do so went to the movie tonight tonight was family night after the tea had cooled down it's like right now it's uh, at about between 70 degrees. I don't know if you'll even be able to see that, but this thing's showing it's room temperature. But I mixed up, not mixed, but I poured off a cup of my existing kombucha. This is really what I consider my SCOBY hotel. And one thing I just want to point out, you, if you're trying to get started making kombucha, you do not have to have a SCOBY. That is, you just, you don't. I, I thought you did when I got started. And so I'm going to show you, hopefully we can see this good. This, um, I put this in on 1214. Now this has gone longer. Um, we went on vacation and came back and had, but anyway, this right here, this, this one did not have a SCOBY at all. The only thing I did was I put in two cups of kombucha. So instead of one cup like I normally do, with a with a scoby i put in two cups even then i don't know if that's necessary and this thing had a has a really nice healthy scoby so if you do not know anybody that has um kombucha that can give you starter all you got to do go get some of this it's gts is the brand and get the original kombucha do not get any flavored kombucha you need to get just or this one says organic and raw, which that's what all kombucha is. But get the original, which means it's not been flavored. And um, you could probably get away with... Um, so the, what, and what I would do is do a gallon, pour either the whole bottle or half a bottle in there, or do two gallons, and then that is what's going to get you going. So now you make a, a whole gallon of kombucha, and then have you more gallon jars so that you can take off and start making four, five, six, like I'll have, I've got six gallons I've done now, I need to get two more ready, and I'll have eight gallons brewing at one time. So again, I would, I would resist the urge to make a gallon and try to drink it all and only have a one little cup left. I'd take that whole gallon, break it down, and, and take, um, so like if you don't have a, you could take that SCOBY and cut it up, and that's, um, you can cut in little pieces, like a you know that big around. Um, take a bigger scoby and cut it in four pieces, or just no scoby at all. You do not have to have a scoby. Um, I do think it'll it'll help in the uh, facilitating. It won't take as long. But um, you also notice I put dates. I'm gonna set this out of the way. So today, I when I put them up on the shelf, I always put the date on this little yellow sticker um, put a little sticky note on there 
and then um, I'll go over doing the F2, so stage two um, process and how I label those on the boxes. But um, these labels are good. And then the last, the last thing, and you can, you can probably pick these things up for pennies on eBay, but these are kind of nice. Now you can use a straw, but when you get ready to test and see if your kombucha is ready, and again, if you don't know what it should taste like when it's ready, if you get some of this, taste it, that's probably what it ought to taste like. So now you can take this thing, you can stick it down beside the SCOBY, go down, uh, draw up some of it, and then just taste it and see uh, if it's ready or not. But generally speaking, seven uh, days, maybe 10 at the most. Um, if you let it, you can let it go longer, but it's gonna have much more vinegary flavor. So, all right, we will resume this video in seven to 10 days, and I will show you stage two and hopefully this has been beneficial. Okay, one of the things I want to show you is that, uh, what is, let's see what the day is. Today's the 10th. So these has been seven days. I actually want to take these out today and test them. But if you notice, I said I just about knocked it down. This is, that was elevated up in the air. And so these scobies will sometimes, you know, gas is forming, it's going up, and then it'll stick to the side of the glass and it'll you can get to where almost the entire scoby uh which my sister and i affectionately call it the booger the kombucha booger but uh anyway that thing will get up it'll get elevated and be almost all the way out of your kombucha so what you do you just come in and just give it a give it a little a little like that there's nothing matter of fact if you let me zoom in see that one it's elevated, so I kind of left these because I wanted to show you on video what uh, what happens. All you do is just barely shake your bottle, and it'll it'll knock it down. And just one more example. Here's another one that's out of the out of the kombucha, and so I just shake the bottle ever so slightly, and it'll slosh back down and and get back in there. So you don't want to really disturb it, but you do want to keep that scoby down in the kombucha and that's it so starting on about the seventh day that is when you in the background you can hear my 13 year old boston terrier who cries like a baby every day wants to be held and all that good stuff anyway all right so on starting on the really the seventh day you want to you want to start doing a little taste test um, you know, the more you do kombucha, the more you know what flavor you like, what you're going for. And, you know, if you're new to it, go get a bottle of kombucha from the store, the same bottle that I showed earlier in the video, and uh, taste it. And then once you kind of achieve that flavor, you can either, the longer you let it go, the more vinegary it's going to be. So, you know, you're going to have your, uh, your scoby, your kombucha booger right here on top. These little things right here are really good because you can just squeeze them, stick it down the side, and draw some up. Look, if you don't have one of those, take a straw. All you gotta do is just stick it down in here, just like so. Try not to kind of see how I'm going down the side. Now, stick your finger on top. That holds it. And really, to be honest, a straw is a little better because now you can get a little bit more of a taste. So you can get you a little good little taste of it and know what it tastes like. I've already tested this today and you know what? It, it's still just a little too, has a, a little twinge of a tea taste. So it's not quite ready, uh, but maybe tomorrow or the next day it, it will be ready. So anyway, we'll come back, check it again and it should be go, good to go. If you used all of the same starter and you made your tea exactly the same with the same amount of sugar, which should be exactly one cup, no more, no less. These things really, when they're stored in the same location, um, should ferment at about the same rate. Um, you could have a case where maybe one was a little different, but overall they should do it at about the same rate. So hopefully this is helpful. We'll come back, check in a day or two, 
and once uh, it's ready to go, we'll bottle it up and I'll show all of that. All right, today is January the 12th. We did the first part of this video on the, uh, on the third, so it's been nine days. And uh, just to, to reiterate a couple things, kombucha does not take a specific number of days uh, to be ready. I mean, it can vary from seven days up to even 14 days. I, I would, there's probably nobody that would go longer than that. I mean, unless you just want all out vinegar. But uh, as a general rule, probably seven to 10 days is the norm. It could be a little longer than 10. Um, but anyway, so I will show you in just a minute. We're gonna have some footage. You will recall I did uh, two jars with no SCOBY whatsoever. You do not have to have a SCOBY to make kombucha. And so I'm gonna show you this. Um, it's probably gonna be another couple days before this is ready. Um, but all of my stuff on the third uh, is ready. So anyway, well, all right, well, I'm gonna get the camera off. I'm gonna show you the SCOBYs on these things. Man, they're, they're beautiful. I do firmly believe using distilled water is best. My scobies look so much healthier uh, after I quit using tap water and started using distilled and I, I really believe it's because of the chlorine uh, that is in the tap water. Alright so these are the two jars that I did with no no scoby whatsoever and just put kombucha in there and look guys now these scobies are thinner um, these are going to take, and, and these are one day behind the other bottles. So I would say give these another uh, two days, and they're going to be ready. Normally, I, you know, I just wanted to get them down so I could show you. So again, you can kind of see. So there's the thickness. You can see that. Now let's come over to this one, and it's it's definitely thicker, right? Um, but that's just proof you do not need and the thickness of your scoby does not necessarily indicate whether it's ready or not so uh, i'll do a taste test on these and see but man all these are ready to go and one thing is well worth doing i got this jar from uh walmart for five dollars what is ideal, because if you start drinking kombucha on a regular basis, you have to make it in batch like this to keep the number of bottles up that you'll drink every day. If you're doing two a day, um, you can't just have one gallon of kombucha. That's, that's not gonna work. So, But what you wanna do is have a bottle with this little um, spout on it, and you make up one of these now this one I did on the 9th, so this is not going to be ready, but I don't need to make start new ones now anyway. But you, at the same time you do your batch bottles, always make one in here, and this is what you'll bottle from for your starter on the next new gallons you're going to do. So I would uh, get one of these, and then you can use that for your, your starter. And then here are all my bottles that we're going to bottle up. And... So I'll go over the mixing of my fruits, and then when I put them back in here, I'll put a sticker of what the fruit was that I flavored it with, because each box will be a little different. Um, so I'll go over that. Okay, I want to talk just a, a very quick minute on uh, your F2, so fermentation stage two, but everybody calls it F2. Um, you have I mean, really what I consider two options. Um, you can take your fruit and just dice it up and put chunks in the bottle. My sister does not like, um, and I think maybe her daughter especially, does not like the, the fruit pureed in a, I mean, so I've got a Vitamix blender and I will put it in here and I'm gonna blend it up. Um, one, I think it allows you to kind of get a better F2 uh, processing because all the fruits now opened up and the sugars and um, but I will tell you this it's not for everybody I may not like the that mixture in your drink and so I'm gonna hopefully you can see this so this part of it was up here at the top and then you'll have the rest of it is just kind of settles down in the bottom I mean and that is just a very fine 
where I blended that up in the blender. Now, uh, well, I messed up. When I came back from vacation, I was under the gun. I may have mentioned this in our, earlier in the video, but I made all of these the same. I made them with primarily blackberries. Um, it is not awful, but man, there are some other combinations that are my favorite. So I've had to drink 42 bottles of this. It was all made because we got back. It was I needed to get it done. And I didn't have the fruit. So anyway, but what I'll do is I'll take these and I'll shake it up, right? So I just take this, get it out of the fridge. Now you have to be careful. You can see there's some carbonation there. These did not have much in the way of carbonation. There'll be others. Woo! Actually, that one's got some fizz to it. Some of my other ones, when I do bananas and strawberries, uh, if I was to shake it up like that and open it, man, I'd have, I have a mess. It'd go everywhere. So you have to be, but these, I just know all of these didn't have near as much carbonation in them. Um, but I would just shake them up and have all of that in there. I don't mind it whatsoever. So, but you will experiment and find out what your favorites are. Mine are strawberry and pineapple. So I'll get these pineapples and just get the, what, they're like two bucks a piece at the grocery store, cut up, cut, cut all that up. So I'll mix pineapple and strawberry. Uh, I like strawberry and banana. I do the, the grapes and some, I got blueberries, grapes. And so I just kind of do a, a combination. I, I think like a two fruit combination is probably more preferable than just doing a hodgepodge, but I love having pineapple in it. That pineapple gives it a very good flavor. So whether you get a, you know, live pineapple and cut it up, or you get canned pineapple, I, I'm, I've done it both ways. Um, but again, I'm gonna blend it, so we'll set the blender up, and I'll just kind of show you, I'll blend it up, and then I'll pour it in the jars. So we'll go over that, and really we'll close this video out, and hopefully this is gonna be helpful and just showing you the complete process from start to finish. But you know, this is the finished product. These are the bottles I use. Um, man, they're eat they're, even with these, so you have to excuse my mess. My wife's been cooking for our college kids and getting them some food to take back to college. So we've had a lot going on here today. These, if you wash them out immediately after, you know, drinking your kombucha, rinse it out, it's good. I still end up just going back and hand washing. Uh, if I've left them, didn't, you know, forgot, these are a couple I forgot to rinse out. So I just put the water in there, let it soak. Then I'll take a brush and just have me a pan of dishwashing liquid, wash them out with the brush, upside down to, you know, drain dry, and then uh, they're ready to go again. So, um, but it is good to, to rinse them out. If you use those the ones with those little bitty holes in the neck, they'd be, they're almost going to be impossible to, to wash, to rinse out. There, there's a number of reasons why I don't like those types of bottles. But uh, these right here, easier to drink out of, easy to wash, uh, easy to get your fruit in, uh, as we'll see in just a minute. So, hey, if you've liked this video, I'm in the process of I'm going to kind of rebrand. This has been my personal video channel, but I'm going to turn it into uh, Timmy D's tips and tricks for just everyday life and start doing some more videos on just everyday stuff and, and doing videos that hopefully can help people in a variety of things to give you uh, just some helpful information. So if you like it, hit that thumbs up and uh, maybe even subscribe and uh, see if I can grow the channel and we'll just kind of see where it goes. So we'll get set up, start blending our fruit, and bring this to a close. Okay, so hopefully we're going to have a good camera angle here. And, you know, I've already mentioned I have these box, these jars right here, got from Walmart for $5. I use this to actually just create a new bottle that I'm going to use for starter the next time. But then when I'm bottling, I have one of these empty, and this is what I use for bottling the kombucha just makes it uh, very easy instead of trying to pour it because you can still make a mess now first and foremost guys you're making this for yourself but you may share it with other people uh, cleanliness is of the utmost importance make sure you wash your hands and that you you're 
I mean, you touch a lot of germs. We're in the flu season right now, so I've already washed my hands. And again, we want to make sure that we're we're staying clean and not introducing any germs into your kombucha. All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, let's see here one one bottle one of these. So I'm going to go ahead. I've washed my hands. I'm going to take the Scoby. Hopefully we can see. Man, this is a good, good grief. This is nice. I don't know if you can see it. Boy, that's a big old thick, just healthy Scoby. Man, that thing's nice. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm just trying to think. I really need to put this in a picture right now. All right. And for you, anti, I mean, normally I keep this in glass. Um, I'm really short one, one jar, but I'm going to pour this. And the reason I want to pour it is because I really want to kind of um, stir this up. I mean, you can see it's a, kind of acidic, got all the bubbles going on in there. So I'm going to pour it back because what I could do is, is stir this. Um, but doing that right there was adequate. And I'm going to take and put um, about a cup worth in here. So I'm going to go ahead and take about one cup. And it doesn't matter how much. We're just trying to make, when we mix up our fruit, let me do one more little scoop. I want that to be, I'm trying to make it so my fruit will be nice and, and uh liquid be very pourable so you see I've got a this batch of strawberries put that in there man for bananas uh, I do not know uh, let's see I'm probably gonna there might be enough on strawberries so for your bananas uh, what's really good is let them get overly ripe put them in the refrigerator and then when you get ready to do your kombucha pull out those just really ripe, almost black looking bananas that are, they're now frozen, but they, you know, would have been soggy. Man, those, that's, that's what's giving the rich, rich flavor. So these right here, these, these are not going to give you near the flavor. I went to the store and tried to find some old ones, but you know, I was just kind of behind the curve. Preparation is key, being being prepared. And, you know, I said I really like to do just two fruits. Um, put a look, put some grapes in there. A few little grapes would be all right. But primarily, strawberries and bananas, and put just a few grapes. And again, I put some of my kombucha down in there so that it it would be have a nice uh, liquid flow to it all right that's all we need for that So now I will get set up and then we'll start pouring pouring the uh, into the bottles. Alright, so I've got my pitcher of mixed up strawberry and bananas. I went ahead, and like I said, I make I took my sticky note, so I always keep my pad and my marker in my handy dandy little supply box, so it's always there. Write the date. For F2, and I need to put F2 on there. I normally write F2. Date, strawberry, banana, and I only put very little grapes. I put a little tilde telling me I only put just a few grapes in there. And that way, when you get a flavor that you, man, you like it, then you, you can remember. And what I'm going to do is when these are sitting on the shelf for two more days for F2, then when I put them in the refrigerator, I will put this on, I have an extra refrigerator out in our garage. And I'll put this on the shelf. When I put the bottles on the shelf, I'll pull this off the box, stick it in the refrigerator with that group of bottles. So when I reach in there to grab a bottle, 
I know my flavors because the, the sticky note will be with the group of bottles. So that's an easy way just to keep up with what flavors you have and then man when you come up with something you really like. So now it's time to pour some of this stuff and you'll get a feel. So you, you can see that amount right there. That's about how much I put in there. That's, I mean, you, you could put a little more. And again, this is not, um, this is not science. This is really more, uh, probably a little more art and just find out what, what you like. You can take some of the stuff that I do and probably make some great improvements on it. But I would like, what I do try to do is make sure each one of these are, are even, right? So I'll go through and fill them. And if I have stuff left over or not enough, um, but you can take a full, if your pitcher's full, you can pretty much go through and do, do 12 bottles. And then if you get one too full, of course you can take it out and, all right, so I don't, you don't have to sit here and watch me fill all these bottles up, but we're going to, I'll finish filling these up and then we'll, we'll fill them up with kombucha and we're really done. All right, so this is, I mean, that's all I had left, and I filled up. You probably saw how much was in here. You know, when this is up there, you'll get a feel for it. This is for 12 bottles. Each one of them has about that much in there, and they're all pretty much equal. So I need, you know what, let me wash my hands. I need to pull the um, SCOBY out of this one, pour it into the bottle. So, yeah, man, look at that. I mean, that thing... I don't even do that. That's just, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. And this one actually has two. So I just put this, so you can see here, I took a SCOBY and I cut it in four pieces. I was, um, so this is actually kind of double layered. So this is from two, two SCOBYs that were kind of stuck, so I didn't tear them apart. But I cut them in four pieces and put just that small amount in there. And that right there was adequate to uh, really facilitate the process. And as you know, you don't have to have a SCOBY. But if you take a SCOBY, a big round one, and cut it in four pieces, you're good. All right, so now we're going to use... Boop, boop, bear with me. We're going to use the... Um, funnel but now I'm going to put I like this little stainless steel funnel one thing I do like is that it came with this little piece right here you know some people do not worry about it I mean they just they don't care but I I will pour it one to kind of mix it up but then I also uh, it'll strain out if you just had any big screens of some of your SCOBY stuff. I mean, personally, I just, I don't want all the big long strings in there, so sometimes you'll have that, sometimes you won't. But if there's any um, SCOBY strings, that thing will just filter those out. But again, by pouring this in through the funnel, I am now um, kind of just mixing it up so that all of it is the same, right? Instead of just dipping in or pouring. So, that's done. We can leave our funnel there. And so that my wife does not fuss at me for having any sticky on the floor. So now, this right here, man, it just fills up really. That's why I like this right here with this little spout. Um, you know, you probably could do it a little faster. Now, I like to, I fill this up until the foam is all the way because that foam is going to go down it will pop and i'll probably have to come back and top these off so i'll go ahead and fill every one of these up and i try to go down the side so as not to just um cause a lot of foaming in there but i mean you're, you're going to have that but that foam will go down and so you want to fill it up to where that foam is sticking out the top and after it settles down, we'll go back and I'll top it back off again because I want 
I want this stuff to be all the way up to the top of that neck when it's after it's all the foam is gone. Alright, there's that one. So we'll just go through and do this for each one of these. And so it's just it's just rinse and repeat. And that is how you batch your kombucha. And we're gonna let this sit on the shelf for two days. So these will go in the box, sit on the shelf for two days to build up the carbonation. Because what you're doing is you're wanting to build up carbonation. And then, uh, and so you want to have, I don't have the lid out here, but these are called, these white lids that are on here, these are, uh, this, is, this particular lid is called an F2. And when it builds up carbonation, the lid right here will kind of round up, get a little roundness to it. That's how you know it's built up carbonation. It can be hard to get these lids, but if you don't get the lids on good, the carbonation will seep out. So if you just barely put the kind of put them on there and don't give them a good snug down, the carbonation will leak out. Um, so you got to put them on pretty good. Uh, but then it, sometimes they can be hard to get off. So that's it. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you order your bottles in by the case like I did, do not throw those boxes away because when you Want to store them on the shelf for phase two this is the way to go uh, the six gallons netted me 40 uh 16 ounce bottles so these bottles right here these are 16 ounce bottles um uh drawn a blank i forgot what stout so the style of bottle this is called a stout bottle but i will have links to where i purchased the stuff uh, no commissions. I'm not tied to any of these companies. I'm just trying to share some information. And the majority of this last half of the video was really geared towards me, you know, mixing my fruit and flavoring it. That is by far my favorite way to have kombucha. And one of the things I really didn't mention was that, you know what? I mean, but plain natural kombucha, it is good. So if you're gonna do some bottles of plain kombucha, the only thing that you probably wanna do is to put no more than a teaspoon. You could probably do a half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon of sugar in here, uh, add it to the bottle, put the lid on real good, and that will uh, give you the carbonation in the phase two uh, fermentation or F2 fermentation process. So it will, basically eat the sugar, the bacteria will eat the sugar and cause the carbonation. So when I'm adding fruit to these bottles, the, the fruit has sugar in it and that is, in my opinion, that's enough to add the carbonation for the second phase. But if you're doing it plain, add just a little bit of sugar to it and that will take care of it. So 40, 40 bottles, if I drink three bottles a day, which is what I normally do, I'll never drink more than that. I mean, that's, that's 13 days worth of kombucha. So you can see that it takes quite a number of bottles to, you know, provide yourself with the kombucha that you need to drink or you want to drink every day. Because otherwise, I mean, I'm not going to go to the store and pay $3 a bottle. Um, and it's also not a 15, 20 minute process. I mean, it takes a little bit of time to come into the kitchen, get everything set up. But if you'll do it in a batch, you can do this twice a month, maybe even have more gallons and make a, a larger number and have three, you know, anywhere between two weeks and three weeks worth of kombucha every time you sit down and do this. So now, you know, if I sit down, if I, if I wasn't doing the camera and trying to kind of get things set up for that, I mean, you can move fairly quickly. I would say an hour and a half at the most from the time I come in and lay everything out to get it made and clean up. So, you know, it's not bad. I, I enjoy it. I get to make the flavors I want. And uh, I don't drink sodas anymore. I never will. Um, so this was by far the best alternative for me because uh, even though water is king, man, I love something other than water. And so kombucha, that's my alternative.
So again, guys, if it's been helpful, help me grow this channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. If you have questions or suggestions, or you know what, if you've got better ideas and can help other people, by all means, put it down below and uh, we'll just help each other out. I hope it's been beneficial. Have a great day.